Hi, this is Ben Finio, and this video is the Science Buddies wire stripping tutorial. It will give you a basic introduction to wire stripping for electronics projects that you might encounter on the Science Buddies website. So the type of wire you see here is commonly called hookup wire. It's metal conductive wire surrounded in a thin coat of plastic insulation. It comes in many different colors and different sizes, so you can use it to color code projects if you have lots of wires to keep track of. And there are two main types of hookup wire called solid wire and stranded wire. So you see here in my left hand I have solid core wire where the middle metal part of the wire is just a single continuous piece of metal and in stranded wire the middle of the wire is actually made up of many individual smaller strands that are twisted together kind of like a rope. Now the main difference here is that stranded wire is much more flexible so less likely to break if it's going to be bending back and forth so this can be a better choice for example, if you're building a robot with moving parts that you need to connect. And solid core wire, while it's stronger, that also means it's more likely to break if you kink it very sharply. That might break this connection and then you'll lose electrical conductivity through the wire. The advantage is that since the ends are much stiffer, they will work nicely with solderless breadboards. If you're doing a project where you need to push the end of the wire into a breadboard, that'll pop in there very nicely. Whereas the end of the stranded wire, even if I use the end that hasn't been untwisted here yet, is more likely to kind of get bent to the side when I try and press that in. Now, to potentially save you some time, if you are using one of these breadboards, you might want to look into just getting a jumper wire kit. These are kits where there are pieces of solid core wire that have been pre-cut and had the ends stripped and bent down 90 degrees, so they will pop right into these breadboards and you won't actually need to use a wire stripper. But um, if you're not using a breadboard or you need longer pieces of wire than are contained in this kit, you are going to need to know how to strip the wire. So that's what we're going to go over in the rest of this video. Now, the handiest and most common tool to do this that we really recommend picking up if you're going to be doing more electronics projects in the future is called a pair of gauged wire strippers. This is a tool that looks kind of like a pair of pliers that has a series of little holes that correspond to different diameters of wire then make it very easy to strip the insulation right off. So what I'm going to do is I have my spool of wire here and you might not be able to see the writing in this video but this is 22 gauge stranded wire. So if we look closely at the wire strippers you see I have two different scales here. One says AWG solid and the other says AWG stranded. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. That's the system that's used to measure the wire diameter and it's a little counterintuitive because as the numbers get bigger, you can see the holes actually get smaller. So it's an inverse scale where a bigger number means a smaller diameter. But to use this, all I have to do is pick the right hole. So 22 stranded corresponds to the wire I have here. I open these up and all you have to do is feed the wire into the proper hole, close the wire strippers, give it a nice little tug, and the insulation should come right off. Now these wire strippers also have a cutting surface that works just like scissors so I can come along here cut the wire to the length I need and then just do the same thing come in get the wire lined up in the right hole give it a gentle tug and the insulation pops right off as you can see I now have my piece of wire that's stripped at both ends and then I can go hook it up to whatever it is I'm building now Again, well, we really recommend picking a pair of these up if you're short on time and, you know, don't have time to order one or run to the hardware store. Then there are some other ways you can do this. If you're just looking for something you can use around the house, you can use a sharp kitchen knife or a hobby knife or exacto knife. For young children, remember, these knives are very sharp, so you're probably going to want to get adult help to do this. Now, there are a couple different techniques that people use. One is to hold the knife perpendicular to the wire and roll the wire under the knife blade to make a cut all the way around the perimeter and then pull the piece off just using your fingernails. I prefer to put the wire flat and scrape the insulation off like this. So this is a bit more of a pain because you have to rotate the wire around and get the insulation off each side. You're also going to want to be careful not to do this on, for example, a nice kitchen tabletop where you can scratch something. So you can rotate around and then really once you've started to make enough nicks in the wire you can come in and just pull chunks off with your fingernails and it'll work just as well. So you can see there I started with the knife and used my fingernails to pull it off. So that technique isn't optimal but again if you don't have time to pick up a pair of wire strippers or you really don't want to spend the money because you don't think you'll use them, again 
then you can use a sharp knife, but have adult supervision when you do that because these knives are very sharp. Now, there are a couple other options in terms of wire strippers that I'll go over really quickly. One is called a pair of adjustable wire strippers. These are kind of a pain to use, so honestly, um, really don't recommend them when it's just a few dollars more for the gauged pair. Um, the advantage is that these are cheaper, so if you need to buy you know, 20 of these for a classroom or something and you want to save money, then you can pick these up for just a couple, couple dollars each. And how these work is they have a little adjustable screw that you slide back and forth, and that sets the diameter of a single hole. So I have this preset here to strip the 22 gauge wire. It works the same way, but the downside here is if you don't get that screw adjusted to exactly the right spot, then you run the risk of nicking or breaking the wire or not actually cutting into the insulation all the way, and then that's going to make it much more difficult to strip. So if I wanted to make an adjustment, you need a flathead screwdriver. I can come in here, loosen this screw, slide it back and forth, and then that sets to a different diameter. You see there, I actually loosened it, and now this slides back and forth. So again, I personally don't really like these, but they're cheaper. So if you're in a pinch, you can pick up a pair of these. The last thing that's probably going to be a lot less common because these are a little more expensive is a pair of automatic wire strippers, also called parrot strippers, because the thing up here kind of looks like the beak of a parrot. And how these work is you just feed the end of the wire into these jaws and squeeze. And I don't know if you could see that. It's kind of hard to do it in slow motion here, but little clamps in there pinch down on the insulation and just pull forward and pull it off the wires. So again, these are a little more expensive um, and you probably don't need something this fancy when you can just pick up a pair of the gauged wire strippers, but you will find these at hardware stores or online if you're going to buy a pair. So it might be worth it if you're doing a very high volume of project where you're going to be stripping a whole lot of wire because they you know, make it pretty easy to just yank the insulation right off without giving it much thought. So. Those are the different approaches. I'll bring all the tools back in here one more time so you can see them. We have gauged wire strippers on the left, adjustable wire strippers, automatic or parrot wire strippers, and then finally just our little hobby knife here. So recommend this one, but the other options will work in a pinch. So we hope that this has helped explain just the simple process of wire stripping to you and that now you will use this to enjoy some of our electronics projects. Thanks.